people who end up as the first don't usually set out to be first. They set out to do something they love. And by sticking to their truth in the face of adversity, they create a legacy. A legacy that paves the way for the next generation of leaders, giants, and heroes. This mild-mannered hero's legacy transcends time. And it all happened 20 minutes from Hollywood. I just think I should be running back. We've been down the past two games. Can't afford to lose another one. Man, I hear you. Did you talk to your coach? No. Uh, I have a kingfish latte and something sweet for the kids. I think I'd be a better running back than you. Spell running back. You want to play football, can you? But Malcolm says girls can't play football. Now, why would you say something like that? Because it's true. They to get hurt or worse. <laughs> Follow me. All right, so you know who that is? That's Kenny Washington. Who's Kenny Washington? Who's Kenny? Kenny Washington is a legend. They call him the Kingfish. Kenny ran so you could play football. So, uh, black is beautiful, brown is born of the earth. Found a love for the people that's down to stomp on the turf. Known as the Kingfish, he came into the National Football League with a reputation. He never embraced being a trailblazer. He lived through the same indignities that many who broke color barriers faced. Violence, taunts, the humiliations of segregation, without ever getting any sense that the league appreciated his struggle. Still, the Kingfish, like every hero, didn't let these obstacles stop him. March 21st, 1946 was the time. And Kenny Washington was the one. In fact, he was the only one who had the athletic skill, the courage, and the community respect to be the first African-American signed by the Los Angeles Rams to reintegrate the National Football League. Wanting to play the game at the highest level, understanding what that took and what the sacrifices were, we're all thankful that, that he blazed that trail for us. Daring to step on the field where you're not welcome in the arena. And despite the pain that he was feeling, despite the injuries that he was enduring, he just showed up. He was embodying something stronger and something probably bigger than him. When I think of our grandfather, I think of Kenny Washington as being a pioneer, Kenny Washington as being a legend. I truly think it's a, one of the biggest undertold stories. Man, how come I never heard of Kenny Washington? Kenny signing with the LA Rams wasn't his first time breaking barriers. After bringing Abraham Lincoln High two championships in both baseball and football, he went on to become one of the first African Americans to play for UCLA's football team and the first consensus All-American in Bruin history. He was Hollywood at UCLA. He was the man on campus. Didn't know what he was up against at the time because they didn't know if they were going to allow any blacks into the NFL anyways. So he was there to be the best college football player he could be. Those three years on the field represented arguably the greatest of any UCLA player in history. The few African-American players on the 1939 UCLA football team became famously known as the Gold Dust Gang. Kenny is tailback, his best friend Woody Strode by his side, and Jackie Robinson as his wide receiver. By the time he graduated in 1940, he was considered as the top player in the country by the West Coast fans. But like all heroes, his achievements didn't come without challenges. Overt discrimination and segregation marred his career. It'd be another six years before he found himself playing in the National Football League. Sometimes when telling the story, the ugly truth needs to come out. And because that truth is so, uh, so distasteful at times, you just try not to tell the story at all. As, as young people continue to explore the history of the game and why we're we able to do what we do. It's not because we just showed up one day and put on cleats, it's because there was somebody that stood in a gap. And Kitty Washington stood in a gap for a lot of black athletes. I did hear times where he would not leave the football field for different reasons. One, to, to work, continue to work hard on his craft, but other was it wasn't safe to go back home. 
it was tough having to walk through those doors at night and 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 uh, expect everything to be 100% perfect, you know, without looking over your shoulder. I'm a West Coast kid, and Kenny represented it, the athlete, the black athlete on the West Coast, right? My college campus, the minority percentage there was 1%, less than actually. And the isolation, that vulnerability that, that wanted to release the anger and the frustration I was feeling, not only because I felt I was judged before I even opened my mouth when I walked in a room as a black man, right? But on the football field, it's like that it is a magic wand that wands over you for three hours. It's just because you have that jersey on and people recognize your number and your name. But the moment you step away a few hours away, you just you return back to society and you're just a black man. Just being that first, I'm sure, you know, the coaches and the general managers at that time, you know, they wanted a person who probably wouldn't fight back, who would have more discipline on the inside and keep pressing forward other than retaliate. So I think Kenny's ability to do that really kicked down the door for a lot of people. Dealing with adversity, you're talking about all the things that we do as a coach and how you do it and how you perform. In order for us to be able to get through those moments, I think we gotta be able to go outside the box. We gotta reach back and we gotta know that something's deeper. And my job is to push, to motivate, to influence, to teach. And you only can do those things because of the strength of the people that came before you. And what Kenny was able to do at that time, it's unbelievable. My grandfather went through that phase from 1939 to 1946 where he wasn't even allowed to play in the league. And for me, that tells me the league was designed for certain situations. So my grandfather said, the only way we're gonna get, get ahead in this game is if we become the quarterback. It was George Hallis, the coach of the college all-star game, who indicated interest in Kenny for the Chicago Bears team, but he was unable to convince the league to permit integration. A handful of black players had competed in the NFL during the league's first 13 years of existence, but the owners enacted a gentleman's agreement in 1933, unofficially banning black players. Instead, Washington played for the Hollywood Bears of the Pacific Coast Professional Football League, where he was the league's highest paid player. It wasn't until 1946, though, when the Cleveland Rams decided to relocate to L.A. to play in the 103,000-seat publicly owned L.A. Memorial Coliseum that things really changed. A group of black journalists led by Halle Harding prodded the team to give Washington a tryout. The black community in L.A really pressured the team to be racially integrated since black taxpayers, as well as white, paid for construction of the stadium. And it worked. March 21st, 1946, the team signed Washington, followed by Strode on May 7th at the request of Kenny. And by the time baseball's Brooklyn Dodgers signed Jackie Robinson in 1947, pro football was on the road to integration. The media standing behind him was 100% necessary. They did their research and found out, hey, this is the, this is gonna be the best platform for us to continue to have our voice out there, to continue to prosper. So it makes sense to have the best player in the game be right here in LA. My grandfather had a reason for that. It's where the minority tax dollars are going. That's where we need to play. To make such a great impact on a city like Los Angeles is huge. It says a lot about the Rams being forward thinking. The opportunity had to be presented and the Rams gave Kenny that opportunity. When we talk about the community and you talk about the people in it, it goes back to our mantra as the Rams, right? It talks about people first. And when they chose Kenny, it obviously was something that he did in his life. It was something that he did in his walk of life that was great. And you got people to fight for you for the right reasons. When you put people first, that's what happens. And he had to do that in order to get people to support him to go be a Ram, to break those barriers. In his three seasons in the NFL, the Kingfish averaged over six yards per carry, including leading the league with a 7.4 yard per carry average in 1947. He gained over 859 yards for the Rams, including a thrilling, record-setting 92-yard run, the longest run to date for the Rams. Man, that's cow. What? Ain't no way he had a 92-yard run. Do you know how fast you got to run to make that happen? Do you know how fast Kenny was? I can't find any footage. All right. How about I introduce you to somebody who knows? Hey, yo, Franklin. 
What's up, my boy? Man, what's up, bro? What's up? How you doing? Well, how you doing? Good, good to see Man, you. Man, great seeing you, too. So we was talking earlier today, and I was giving him a little history about Kenny Washington. So I figured I'd take him to the man who could give him the, the comprehensive history. For sure, I would love to do that. I mean, Kenny Washington broke many barriers and was a big reason why I was even able to play the game that I love. I play running back as well. So for me, learning about Kenny ins inspired me, right? And even hearing his story, I was able to own and embrace the voice that I have today. Kenny was the first black player to reintegrate the NFL. And you can understand that at that time, given there was a ban, people weren't happy about that. So probably his teammates, the community, the entire league was upset about this moment. In the midst of that adversity, Kenny persevered. He signed his NFL deal on March 21st. A month later, the Rams announced that he would have surgery on both of his knees. And it really changed the way the press looked at him. A news article written by Dick Hyland stated this, coming into the National League with reputation, Kenny Washington is going to find himself on a hot seat every time a ball is snapped into play. He's become a beaten up ball player who is neither so strong nor so quick in his reactions as he was before the war. Just how much duty he will see in the game against the Redskins September 6th depends on the condition of his left knee. This is a man in his late 20s who on top of being targeted on the field by opposing white players, was having his fifth knee surgery of his career. They didn't know how they were going to use him. When they went up against the Redskins, neither Washington nor Stroh got much time in the game. Left folks wondering if signing the two of them was a publicity stunt. There was still a fight of racism on the West Coast. It just wasn't in the Deep South, right? It wasn't just in the Northeast, but it was all over the country. You know, me being a starting running back uh, in the NFL meant that not only am I fighting off other people that want my job, but also you have this pressure of society of comparison, right? It's comparison to the greats and to the past. And what you stand on, it can't just be about stats and wins. It needs, it needs to be more than yardage. You know, it has to be an effect that the community in large gets to benefit as well. And when he was done playing, he wanted to take the bar higher, right? As you said, Kenny ran so you can run as well. Kenny became an officer. And not only that, he was one of the first black players to be in a Hollywood film as well. I think going back into the community and being that figure on the LAPD, knowing the climate back then, that showed a lot of courage. It is beyond What's this up, important that we as athletes, as team owners, as institutions, to use our platform that we have to cause change, to provide those opportunities, to, to allow people to blaze trails. You look to an organization that represents your city or your state, and you have the star player look like you, well, it makes you feel like you could do anything. With Kenny being a running back, you can see over the years of legacy from the great ones, uh, you know, from ED to Marshall uh, to some of the others that have come up after the Rams willing to lead in diversity. They're willing to push the envelope. They're willing to give opportunity to young people, you know, um, regardless of gender. So it, we lead in all these different subcategories. And it starts with these stories like Kenny Washington. We're here to celebrate the 75th anniversary of his signing with the Rams. Everybody here knows who he is, even though it was long before any of them were ever born. So for me and my family, I'm actually the first generation. So I'm the first person to go to college. And I'll be the first to create a change and break the generational curse of not having access or opportunities to certain things. So by using the opportunities and what I learned from this scholarship, I want to be able to give back to the youth in my community to find a separate way rather than being out on the streets. Kenny ran so I could be the very best version of myself. You can't speak enough about what the man did for us. You can only go out and show. He wanted to not just create pathways for himself, but individuals such as you to really follow and understand that you can be all that you can be as well. History has a tendency to recognize giants over superheroes. Maybe because giants are big people. But superheroes, they're larger than life. They don't break through walls of concrete and leap tall buildings. They destroy age-old norms and policies, opening doors of opportunities for future generations to run, just like Kenny did. 
Society has a way of hiding certain milestones and events. But in time, the powerful stories of great people and moments emerge. And the story of Kenny King Fitz Washington has found its light and opened the doors for integration in all sports. Kenny ran so I could score touchdowns. Kenny ran so I could play football too. Kenny ran so I can own and use my voice. Kenny ran so I could see. Kenny ran so I could create generational wealth for my family. Kenny ran so I could empower other young black professionals. Kenny ran so I could be able to believe in myself. Kenny ran so I could be the Rams' first black female analyst. Kenny ran so I could inspire those that come after me. Kenny ran so I could serve others. Kenny ran so I could redefine the mold. Kenny ran so I could create my own legacy. Kenny ran so that I could break barriers. Kenny ran so I can play and pay it forward by coaching the youth. My grandfather, Kenny, ran so the rest of us could fly.